Thrombosis TV coverage of the 2015 ISTH conference in Toronto, Canada. Do joining us now, Dr. Raman Artang, talking about a University of Nebraska Medical Center study. Thank you, sir, for coming by. You're very welcome. What can you tell us about your study? Uh, we looked at um, the new anticoagulants called NOAX and uh, uh, including the one that are uh, currently FDA approved, such as dabigatran, rivaroxaban, and apixaban, and try to figure out how we can monitor these agents in an easy and practical way. So that's the basis of our, our abstract. Why did you feel this was important to do? Uh, in the beginning, and particularly when these uh, drugs came into the market, it was a, um, a vision uh, or a wishful thinking that you do not require monitoring. Uh, as compared to warfarin that requires significant amount of monitoring. Uh, the issue is that you cannot, the, the uh, blood thinning business, the anticoagulation is a double-edged sword. Uh, it, it's sometimes right perfect, but sometimes it's not, sometimes it's too little and patient is making blood clots even you're, when you're treating them. And other times you're giving too much and now they're having bleeding complications. So, there has to be a way uh, to monitor this, not for everyone, but for people who are not responding to treatment or having bleeding complications. Why is this so important to monitor these patients in the ways that you're doing it? It is extremely important because there is no way to figure out what you're doing. You're just giving this drug to a lot of people. And, uh, and you cannot, I mean, one way of figuring it out, and that's the only way that has been published, is by looking at outcome that takes two or three years before the study is done, uh, looking at how people are doing overall. But for a clinician, the doctor in their office or in the hospital on a regular basis, when you have a patient in trouble, they need to have something they, they can look at right, right away and see if the drug is working or not, or if it's working too much. And that's why monitoring is incredibly important. What stands out from what you've discovered so far? Well, uh, if you look at what, what is available at this point, there are multiple different uh, systems. I mean, a few years ago, just two or three years ago, there was nothing. Uh, and now there are uh, many commercial um, uh, entities available to, to monitor something. One is called a thrombin generation, um, uh, and uh, the other one is actually measuring the drug concentrations or factor 10A concentrations. And the method that we have worked with uh, is called a thromboelastography, the, the new uh, version of it that is called the TEG6S. And um, the advantage of the system that I work with and the, what the abstract is about is primarily the fact that. You do not need to pre-process anything. This is a primarily as a point of care assay. So you just take blood from the patient and squirt it into the machine and you have a result in 10 minutes uh, whether the patient is in therapeutic range or not uh, or whether the patient is in uh, subtherapeutic or uh, super therapeutic uh, range of, of the drug. Obviously you're trying to balance, straddle this fence where does it ultimately need to go? It needs to go a place where um, the clinicians feel confident that I have a drug that is very effective to, for treating patients with uh, clotting disease, including, let's say, myocardial infarction, atrial fibrillation, stroke, blood clots in the legs and lungs. With that drug comes the risk of bleeding complications. I know as a clinician, that I can reverse it if I want to, and that's where the, all the antidotes are coming into the market that are extremely exciting. And secondly, I know how to monitor the situation if I'm in trouble. Um, so that, that's the wishful thinking. We're not there yet, but we're very close. Very good. Dr. Artang, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Very welcome. Very welcome.